Ah, uh, greetings, Pathfinders. Uh, welcome to another edition of Booster Best Jerry. Uh, before I get started, I um, do want to announce that I will be interviewing James Beck on uh, Friday. Uh, he has a new product coming out, and we're going to go over it, and it's going to be great. And there will be more information on that uh, as the week progresses on my Discord, which you could find at infinite.net. Uh, also, just kind of wanted to shout out kind of weird to do a pre-show shout out i'll get probably back to it later i did happen to get in the mail the guns and gears deck from paizo um you know bought them yeah uh love them love them love them um i'm just really enthused about them i i cracked them open um about an hour before the show started to take a look and uh here as long as i have the display up here let's go ahead and show them off um uh i i really love these item cards uh like uh, when when we get a chance to, to GM in person again, I'm absolutely going to love using these for throwing out to other players just as like a, you know, uh, here's some loot. Because <laughs> I find my players tend not to um, uh, remember the loot that I give them. So I do love item cards and having these ones from Paizo are really cool. The other thing I love is there's a lot of illustrations in here that didn't make it into the book. Um, like, like you got the Gunner's Bandolier here exclusively for the item deck and, uh, it adds a lot of cool flavor so players could feel like they could see what the item they get is. And, uh, I did write for Guns and Gears, so I was happy to see some of the items that I wrote get illustrations. Um, like the, the saddle, um, tripod here got an illustration, which was kind of neat, but most of all, I'm really glad the lucky deck, uh, or lucky draw bandolier got an illustration here. Um, I was really proud of that item. I like the item a lot. I like loading your gun with cards and shooting them at people. So having a, a deck holster magic item was, uh, was really special for me, but, and I'm glad I finally got to see it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, hi Stephanie, hi Archon, hi Eldritch Dream, glad to see people here watching. Uh, this is our 50th entry into uh, Booster Bestiary, uh, so I'm going to be assembling it into kind of a PDF and just releasing it for free on Pathfinder 2E and 2E Creations and my Discord and whatever. Um, I might do some minor editing, but mostly it's going to be notes, like stuff about like when I designed this, what I was thinking. Uh, and where my mistakes were, uh, because uh, I think having the mistakes on there, knowing that I made these live and I made these in 30 minutes or less, I think that it's more important to me as a designer to go over and think about than I think it would be for people to watch. Um, then, then it would be for people to get like perfect monsters that they don't have to adjust to minor things about. I don't know. It's just it's just the, the, the angle I'm taking it. Uh, as this was a learning experience and this was intended to kind of give me a, a, a Tuesday, reset my brain, get back into designer mode. <laughs> so I tend to spend my Mondays uh, uh, doing all my social media, and then on Tuesday I want to kind of reset and get back into writing mode with this. All right, so we'll just go ahead and roll here uh, as we do, uh, and I'll just count down. One, two, three, four, five. Sure. Uh, for those who don't know, Secret Layer is a special limited box drop set from uh, Wizards of the Coast, wherein uh, they come in these nifty cases. You get a set number of cards. Uh, they all have alternate art. There's been a few exclusive cards released, and I say exclusive with quotes because they promised that they would release them later um, with more generic names, as right now they are all specific IP names, like uh, Street Fighter cards, but they'll come out later as, like, Magic the Gathering creatures instead of Street Fighter characters, but with the same abilities. So you don't have to feel like, if I don't get these, I will never have a chance to play with these cards. No, no, no. These are just cool alternate artworks. So this is the Party Hard Shred Harder case. Oh, yeah, this is the uh, the metal band one you're talking about, Monty. Yeah, Thraxamundar is really cool. Uh, the artwork for these are fabulous. There's also a mystery promo at the bottom, but I'll save that for the end. So let's go see what we get here. I think Thrax might be the only creature in here, so I might just be doing Thrax and Moondar anyway. Plus, you know, Monty wants to see Thrax. Uh, all right. Ah, uh, all right. So let's see what we got here. We have all oh, the foil on this. Is this foil? No, this was non-foil. Cool. I guess I didn't want potato chips. I didn't want Pringles in my deck, so I got the non-foils. So Anguished Unmaking. Check that out. That's a Magic the Gathering card. Man, that's crazy. Um... 
A black, a white, and a colorless exile target, non-land permanent. You lose three life. That's a solid card, too. Man, I should find a place for that in a deck, especially with the artwork like that. That is incredibly cool card artwork. Man, that is so cool looking. I love it. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, that's just so cool. Assassin's Trophy. I love Assassin's Trophy. I, I came back. I played Standard a little bit when Assassin's Trophy came out, and... I played those colors, I built a whole night deck, and it was like the best piece of removal in the set. And uh, beautiful artwork. Oh, I love it. It's meant to be very, very metal. Oh, oh yeah, Vraska was so cool. That that Vraska that came out when this was in Standard was so cool. Oh man. Yeah, I had a, a white, green, black deck that was all knights. Um, as there was the Celestia Knight at the time, and the Knight of Malice, Knight of Honor. Uh, and then there were some night buff cards that were out at the time, and that was fun. All right, uh, Decimate. Ooh, that's cool. Man, these are so metal. Uh, yeah, these were made to look like metal band album covers, posters, promotional materials. Um, and they definitely did a solid job on that. That is, that is so cool looking. Oh, man, I love it. Not a creature, but it is a card. Uh, Dreadbore. Yeah, there's there's a lot of it's it's actually been a running joke for a long time in uh, the tabletop game community that um, a lot of cards would make great metal covers or metal band names. I remember even when Yu-Gi-Oh came out, there was a lot of people who didn't like anime, but they were like, "But Summon Skull, yeah, I could see that as a metal band." <laughs> All right, Dreadbore, and oh man, here's the boy Thraxa Mundar. Check him out. He is the zombie assassin, the legendary creature. Um, he's from a, a plane that was cut into fifths. Uh, so they're kind of like five floating worlds that were sundered. Uh, they're slowly coming back together. The end of the story they did. Uh, he was from the one that was full of undead and uh, very militaristic, uh, kind of always at war. Uh, Grixis was the name of it. Uh, yes, his name means he who paints the earth red. Um, big seven foot tall, scary zombie assassin. He has no allies. He, uh, whenever there's a battle that occurs and he's close enough, he'll ride out to it and, uh, just go to town and kill as many people as he can. <laughs> His effect was, um, uh, he had haste so he could swing out immediately. And then when, uh, whenever anyone sacrificed a creature, he got a 1-1 one -one counter. And whenever he attacked, the opponent had sacrificed a creature. So he was very popular as a Grixis commander for a long time. Uh, commander first, when it was called EDH, or Elder Dragon Highlander, first got really popular uh, around the Alara block, uh, at least in my locals. And um, there weren't a lot of great Grixis commanders. I mean, there was Nicol Bolas, or if you had infinite money, there was Gwendolyn de Corky. But um, she, in fact, Mundar could actually swing in for lethal <laughs> very easily. So, uh, because you only need to hit three times with him, usually or two times sometimes if you have enough sack outlets. So he was a, he was a powerful commander for a while. Um, not sure if he still holds up, but with artwork like this, I think I want to build it. <laughs> I think I want to finally build the zombie commander deck with Raxamundar just because I got this artwork. I'm sure there's better, but like, he's good. He's cool. He's fine. Um, he's really dang cool. Uh, so do any of these, yeah, no, I think. I might make a ability if any of these colors match up. Um, he's Jund. So Dreadbore certainly does. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. So I kind of want to give him an ability called Dreadbore to kind of reference that as we got in the pack as well. Oh, but let's see what the promo was. So these come with cool promos. Oh, it was just Anguith. Okay. Yeah, I think this was the secret layer where everybody... I think with this one, everybody got Angrith, Captain of Chaos. Who, I mean, he's a good planeswalker. I mean, I'd use him in a Thraxamundar tech. Uh, come to think of it. Um, I mean, he wouldn't be the best for it, but especially if you're doing zombies, he'd be good for it. Um, but he's still just an uncommon planeswalker for more of the spark. You know, he's one of those ones you're going to have 100 copies of, and this artwork isn't too fabulous. They just kind of uh, added a Photoshop filter to make it stained glass. We have our Minotaur Captain here. Pirate Minotaur Captain. Yeah. All right. So... Let's go ahead and see what we could do to make a Thraxa Mundar our 50th entry. Uh, let me just set that up. Do, 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 do. Where would I put that website? There we go. And 
There we have it. Thraxamundar. All right. So last week, we for for Undead Week, um, which Thraxamundar was one of the six potentials. Uh, if I'd rolled a six on Undead Week, we would have got Thraxamundar. Uh, but instead, we got him here. Um, <laughs> Uh, Undead Week, we made Clattering Skeleton. It was a skeleton that hides inside of a portable hole. So when you um, were adjacent to the hole, it would pop out and attack you. Uh, it was kind of meant as a uh, added encounter. Um, so the, if the PCs just started looting before they were healing, there'd be an extra encounter thrown in there, which is kind of mean, but it's kind of fun too. Uh, more zombies for Book of the Dead. Exactly, exactly. Um, let's see here then. Uh, so what level should Thraxamundar be? I mean, he's a big boy. Seven drop is huge. I mean, there's... I mean, yes, magic, you get up to 15. But, come on. I mean, there's only, like, one 15 drop and one 14 drop and one 11 drop. Uh, so, yeah, 13 seems reasonable for him. Uh, well, let's look at another undead. Like, a Dulahan is seven. Um, I think there is an undead assassin. I want to say there is. Uh, Devourer is 11, and that one's pretty close. Um, what's a Grave Knight Captain is 6? So yeah, 13's up there. Yeah, I like 13. All right. Uh, so level 13. Uh, neutral Evil, probably Chaotic Evil. He he just he just kills. <laughs> he he kills whoever he can. Uh, medium's good. Seven feet tall is medium. Uh, he, he's gonna probably take up more squares because he rides a mount but we're not gonna i'm not gonna like build the mount inside like you you throw the mount at him something yourself <laughs> like the dulahan he does not come well actually dulahan has a summon mount ability but unlike so unlike the dulahan he will not summon his own mount uh thraxamundar there we have it uh he is an individual unique creature so we do have to give him the unique trait right away so unique undead uh do they give assassin something special here they didn't with clockwork assassin great gardener no just a human humanoid human killer uh medium human humanoid yeah he's just a zombie uh it, I, well do i want to actually make i forget if i make him zombie he has to have like the whole <sighs> i'm gonna check something real quick let's check uh book of the dead Haha. -ha. Uh, I know there's a zombie master in this book that's like a higher level zombie. I'm curious if zombies, higher level zombies, still have to have the I'm always slowed thing. I think they do. A zombie Albert does. That's level three. Zombie Lord. No! High level zombies do not. Cool. Zombies do not have to always be slowed. Oh, that is so cool. I'm so glad he has that. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Withered doesn't have it either. That's another high-level zombie. Same with Zombie Mammoth. Yeah, it looks like only the low-level zombies are slowed all the time. That's great. Yeah, we'll definitely make him a skirmisher. That's a great, great point, Eldritch Dream. Uh, let's go here and go base roadmap, skirmisher. And then I have to apply the roadmap, right? Or does it do it automatically? It does not automatically. Cool. So skirmisher, uh, but we're gonna make him strength based because he carries around a huge sword. So I'm just gonna switch strength and dex right now. Um, we'll make him a zombie. Now that I know zombies don't have to be like that, we'll give him neck roll. He doesn't talk much, but all undead no neck roll. Um, I don't think he like needs common. He's not gonna like get into a conversation. He just kills people. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, let's get rid of all the all that. Aklo, maybe? Hmm. I mean, I'll give him Aklo. He is intelligent. He should have more. And I'll give him common as well. Fine. Um, uh, PF1's stealth greatsword PC. Yes, he is a PF1 stealth greatsword PC. I like that a lot. Uh, he's going to have dark vision for sure. Uh, I think he's also going to have like a special vision trait for war. For fighters, uh, war vision, aggression vision. What would we even call that? I, I like the idea of him being able to detect anybody who's engaged in combat. It would basically be anybody who's in the tracker. It would basically, because his whole thing is he could sense bloodshed and then follow it. Um, or if it's bloodshed, maybe it's just uh, like wounded, wounded vision. What is that called again? Uh, let me look in the search. Uh, blood vision, wound vision, wound. 
detection. I know there's a special term for that, and for some reason it is evading me right now. Um, I know there's a lot of creatures that have that, where if someone's wounded, they could detect that you're around. Uh, Yeth Hound does not have it. If anyone could remember that, I can't remember it. I'm just going to give it a new name then. It's called War Vision. And, uh... Do -do 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 -do. Items, he will have his greatsword. Oh, Velstrax have that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Monty. Uh, Velstrax have Pain Sight. Pain Sight. Yes. Uh, I knew that. <laughs> oh, man. It's funny because I was looking at Velstrax before because there was a chance we were going to get um, uh, the Phyrexian secret layer. And then I would pull Elish Norn and get to make a 20th level Elish Norn Velstrax. So I was I was prepared for Velstrax. Um, so yeah, let's give him Pain Vision. We'll just call it Pain Sight. Cool. Uh, and we'll make that right now. It is a general ability. Uh, Thraxamundar automatically knows whether a creature he sees has any of the Doom Dying or Wounded conditions as well as the value of those conditions. Perfect. And that is Divination and Divine. No actions. Excellent. I'm still convinced Urabraska is going to rebel against the Phyrexians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he is, he is hidden and... Yeah, I, I, I completely agree there, Monty. Um, I think he's going to take Koth and complete him, but, like, complete him. But I don't know. I love Kitans and Velstrax. Yeah, yeah, Kitans are cool. Velstrax, they're really scary in Starfinder, I can tell you that. <laughs> I haven't fought one in uh, Pathfinder 2 yet, but I have fought them in 1E in Starfinder, and they're scary in Starfinder. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't like the blood scent ability, though, for the shark. Um, well, he who paints the... Yeah, now I do kind of like that. Uh, shark Pathfinder 2e blood. What do they call that? Blood scent? It's not scent, though. Yeah, it's called blood sight. And let's... Uh, can smell blood. Not smell. I don't know if he knows whether a creature... Let's call it... Let's call it war sight. Let's make it a unique thing. And he could do wounded um, war sight. Automatically knows whether a creature he sees has any of the doomed, dying, rage, and wounded conditions, uh, as well as the value of those conditions. Automatically knows whether the creature is uh, Thraxamundar can uh, sense blood in the air from up to one mile away. There, awesome. <laughs> my players keep using shadow walk so they're gonna find one at some point yeah i like that a lot just uh they're at full health and they shadow walk somewhere to an empty field and suddenly a bell strack walks out with them and it's all like yo i'm really tired of you walking past my uh my front door every time you want to go anywhere um i've decided i'm just going to uh drag you back to the plane of shadows where you belong and uh we're gonna have some fun all right let's give him his great sword ability his great sword attack uh a great sword has it's a it's the two-handed d no it all likely does d12 that's right it has versatile p cool we'll get at that versatile p um i wish this great sword had a name i guess it doesn't i'm trying to think if there's like a sword in alara grixis i know there's the scythe i guess they never made thraxamundar sword into a card okay that's fine yeah, I could deal with that. Yeah, because there's Unsythe, Killer of Kings. I was thinking for a second that was Thrax Moondar's Blade. It is not. That's fine. We could call it Unsythe. Yeah, it's not Scythe. Unsword? Okay, I like that. We'll call it the Unsword. Uh, the uh, Unsword, Killer of Everyone. Instead of Unsythe, Killer of Kings. I like that. That's so dumb. I love it. Um... All right, let's give him, it's going to be D12. Let's give him um, like a high attack modifier, but a extreme damage. It's going to be good though, isn't it? 3D12 plus 21. Um, let's lower the damage just a little. Let's make it plus 18 times, let's make it plus. He is a, a skirmisher, he should do a lot of damage. So I guess extreme damage isn't too hard. Um, let's just make it plus 19. I don't, I don't, 
that would be 37. That would be a little higher than high, and he has a high attack value. Yeah, that's fine. Let's just do it. Um, I should give him counter idea. He also has sneak attack. Oh, he is an assassin. I'm. He definitely needs that. Now, when you give a higher level creature sneak attack, you have to. Um, you can make the damage plus the sneak attack higher than extreme but you should give the creature low enough damage that it's only a smidgen higher than extreme with the sneak attack so um a 13th level creature like the uh the assassin's level eight and does 2d6 extra so we could easily have him be do uh 4d6 extra because he is cool like that or the great gardener is level 14 and does 66 extra so let's give him he's a 6-6 six, six. I feel like I'm in 66 just for that, but he's, let's give him 40, let's give him a 5d6. So let's give him sneak attack, uh, do, 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 uh, Thraxamundar, am I spelling that right? It's so hard to read that font, Thraxamundar, yeah I am, Thraxamundar, um, <laughs> deals an additional, uh, 5d6 precision damage to a flat-footed creature, two flat-footed creatures. Great. So that's an extra uh, 3.5 times 5, 15, uh, 18 damage. My brain is 17 and a half damage. Uh, so um, with the extreme damage being 40, we should probably make the uh, extreme damage plus the sneak attack like 42. So um, let's go ahead and do... Yeah, sneak attack's way less restrictive. And creatures usually have a way to get their sneak attack off, like, every round. So, yeah. Uh, so, we should be looking for, like, 22 damage, which would be 2d12 uh, plus 5.5 uh, times 2. 2d12 plus 11. That would do it. So, yeah, 2d12 plus 11 would be 22 base damage, plus the 5d6 sneak attack would be uh, 40. I want to go a little higher than that. And he has eight on his strength. So I like doing double strength. It feels poetic. So let's go ahead and do 2d6 plus. Let's just do plus his strength, actually, and give it 3d12. That way it looks like he has runes on his sword, which I like that. It makes it memorable loot. Uh, it will still be up to the GM to, like, decide whether or not he wants that or if it's some special sword only he could wield. But that would make, uh, that would put his total damage output with sneak attack at 43, which is only a smidgen higher than extreme. And it's sneak attack, so there's a bunch of ways to mitigate it. Um, it is a two-handed weapon. Oh, it will do slashing. Of course. And I should underline that, or, uh, lowercase that slashing. There we go. Unsword. That is good. That is good. That works great. Um, so we got to give him a way to make an opening. I like making him flat footed against fear. I think that works well for a zombie assassin. And then we could give him a fear aura. So I like that a lot. It's, it's basic, I suppose. Uh, oh, we're going to make a build called dread boar. We'll do that later. So let's quickly make a, a fear aura. Shall we? Uh, fear aura. Fear aura. For a level 13 creature. Do, 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 do. Always have to look up auras. They're just weird. Let's just do it like the boogeyman. <laughs> Deepest fear. That's how we do it. All right. So cool. So let's call this like um rampage of undeath undead rampage uh which i guess i could call this dread boar it's about being afraid dread yeah okay i'll call this dread boar um or, or i'll bring dread boar the uh, ability so opponent sea strikes who are have frightened are flat-footed there we go and then uh i'll call this like uh Undeath ram, undeath's rampage or something, or undeath. Uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. War. Let's just call this like. I'll call something different. I'll think of a name later. <laughs> All right. So none. Uh, you have to give the aura the aura trait, uh, and if it's a fear aura, you have to give it emotion, fear, mental, and I'll give it visual because you see him. Uh, let's make it six. Let's make it. 
40 feet. Let's make it 30 feet. He's going to be melee anyway. Um, uh, Thraxamundar's might uh, leaves... Uh, actually, yeah, I know what to do. Leaves even the dead cowering. Uh, I got to make it so this could hit undead because he lives in a world of undead. So he probably wouldn't have an ability that wouldn't hurt undead. Uh, whenever a creature ends its turn within the aura, it must succeed at a DC 30 will save or become frightened one. Uh, a creature's frightened condition including nope a creature's frightened condition does not reduce as long as the creature remains in the aura uh, if the creature succeeds at its saving throw it becomes temporarily immune to the aura for 24 hours bloody rampage i like that thank you elder stream uh for 24 hours um this aura can affect undead even if they are immune to emotion fear mental or mental effects great ah uh, i feel like there's some better way to word can affect i almost feel like just get rid of the mental fear and emotion effects but then you want to get bonuses against it Oh, I should put that. This aura could affect undead even if they're immune to emotion, fear, or mental effects. Uh, but such creatures get a plus four circumstance bonus to their will save. Plus four is really high. Plus two. There we go. Because, like, otherwise you're saying that if you have a bonus against fear, you... Um, it's like saying a bonus against fear is better somehow than immunity, and that's weird. So you, so instead of an immunity, they get a plus two bonus. That's fine. Uh, this is not offensive, though. This is uh, defensive. Auras like this are defensive. Auras are defensive. Uh, so let's also give him uh, striking fear, surprise attack. Uh, this is called dread bore. We're going to make this so... Um, okay. Uh, creatures... Frightened uh, creatures with the frightened condition um, are flat-footed to Thraxamundar. There we have it. Or Afex. Whichever is right, I'm bad at spelling. <laughs> this aura affects undead sounds a bit cleaner. Uh, did I write that? This aura, yes, you're right, affects undead comma, even if they are immune, no, no comma, affects undead, even if they are immune, most feel like saying ignoring their immunity, ignoring any immunities, immunity, immunities, there we go, to emotion, fear, or mental effects, uh, undead who are immune, who are, mm, Effects, comma, but such creatures get a plus two circumstance bonus to their will save. I'm going to say plus three. That's higher, but again, it's still lower than immune. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, dreadboard creatures of frightened condition are flat-footed to them. Great. Perfect. Awesome. Um, let's give him attack of opportunity, as he is uh, pretty clever. Yeah, he has good intelligence. Um... I'm going to lower his wisdom to a three. Nah, nah, nah. He's instinctual. Wisdom's fine. Charisma's fine. I'd follow him anywhere. Uh, con five. Yeah, his stats are fine. The baseline stats for a skirmisher at this level are just fine for him. AC is good. Fortitude, reflex, will. Those are all good. I'm going to lower reflex a little because I did lower his dex. And I will give him a little bit more fort to make up for it. Um, it's actually still considerably lower than it should be, though. Uh, resistances, I don't know. Oh, those were left over from the other creatures. So negative healing, yes, he should have that. And the moderate hit points, that's fine too. Um, but weaknesses, resistances, we gotta fix. Uh, so they should have, uh, weakness, positive energy, right? So positive eight. And, uh, then we're good with that. 
Uh, death effects, disease, mental, paralyzed, poison, unconscious. Uh, I don't think he needs immunity. No, no immunity to mental because he's not mindless. That's where I messed that up. Cool. We're good. We're good. Uh, dark vision, war sight. Great, great, great. I really want to quickly look over at skills. I'm going to uh, give him... Yeah, moderate acrobatics is fine because he might want to avoid an AOO at some point. Uh, let's give him high athletics. Let's give him a little lower than... Let's give him a little lower than extreme. Let's give him extreme uh, intimidation because uh, that's what he do. Uh, he is still an assassin, so we're going to give him some stealth uh, and some thievery. No, he doesn't steal. He just breaks stuff. Um... <laughs> Uh, let's also give him no diplomacy. He might faint. Some A GM might want him to faint, I guess, but it's a bad move. But we'll still give him deception because some GM might be like, he might faint. Um, uh, there might be a situation where PCs are what can't are, are all immune to his intimidation. And they might be like, mm, I guess I have to faint to get sneak attack. Because he won't be... Um, he won't be uh, flanking very often on purpose. Unless he has some ability to that. Oh, they tend to have high weakness to slashing and super high hit points too. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, so yeah, let's give him... Let's give him much higher hit points. Let's give him like 280. Uh, and we'll give him weakness to slashing. So slashing... Let's give slashing and positive 12. Would be metal. That's fine. Uh, tend to have weakness to slashing super high hit points. That's great. Do zombies have anything else that I'm missing, though? Uh, I'm going to quickly look here in Book of the Dead. Um, let's see here. Zombies tend to also have weakness positive, slashing, uh, disease, mental, negative healing. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good, we're good, we're good. We got it. Shambling, trample. All right, we're cool. All right, uh, speed 30 feet is good. Let's go 25. He is humanoid uh he doesn't have a climb speed sorry thrax you do not have a climb speed he does not have spells he is not a spellcaster but we gotta give him cool or cool abilities for sure uh so he needs something where he gets stronger when things die around him uh that's for sure um so necrotic consumption uh 30 feet since he has haste 30 feet since he has haste oh oh Okay, sure. That's fine. Yeah, I like the idea of him having haste. That's cool. That's a good, good call there, Monty. Um, I feel like I'm missing one other thing here. No, I'm not. Okay, we're good. All right, so Thraxamundar, we will definitely give him Necrotic Consumption, which is an ability I'm making up right now, but I'm going to base it partially on the Devour. Um, so let's go ahead and say... Uh, do, 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 do. Let's make this a two action. Two, where are you? Two action. There we go. Uh, we're going to make this a two action ability. It will do between levels one and nine. At least all zombies seem to have weakness 10 to slash and positive. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I gave him weak and slash 12 and more uh, hit points. All right. So necrotic consumption. Uh, let's definitely give this death, divine, necromancy. All right, so um, let's go ahead and give this. Uh, okay, so Thraxamundar. Um, what does he do? How does he absorb souls? I guess he just uses his sword. Uh, swings his weapon and uh, Thraxamundar lunges his weapon uh, into a foe to uh, consume their essence. Um, to consume their essence, dealing, let's say, 86, 96, 96. Let me look at the tool real quick. Hazard Builder! Monster and Hazard Creation. Uh, damage for abilities at level 13 would be... Because I know it's not just strike. I guess you could just use strike damage. It seems lazy. 40... Oh, there it is. Area damage. Uh, Usually-ish, maybe. That'll be single use. Uh, Level 11, you would do 66. Yep, so level 13. All right, cool. Yep, we will go uh, dealing uh, 86, uh, 96 
uh, negative damage. Uh, DC 30, basic fortitude save. You upped it while I was reading. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Uh, if a creature is slain, slain by this attack, its soul becomes trapped. Its uh, essence, because it might do undead too, uh, becomes trapped within Thrax. Within Unsword? Is the sword devouring? Within Thrax and Mundar. He's devouring it, not the sword. Let's say it's thirst for battle. It's thirst for battle. It's literally absorbing rage and hate. Um, so it's not necrotic consumption. It's uh, like war consumption, hate consumption, thirst violence consumption, violence, violence absorption, violence consumption. I'll just call it violence consumption until somebody thinks of a better name. Uh, limited use for single target, tweak the dice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um... If a creature is slain, all right. While trapped, uh, a creature cannot be resurrected. I'll just copy and paste that from the devourer. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. Thraxamundar. All right. While trapped, a creature cannot be resurrected except by powerful magic such as wish spell, destroying Thraxamundar. Successfully, or successfully counteracting violence, cons this ability releases the soul. Uh, Thraxamundar. We get rid of how many souls he could hold at once. Uh, a soul has five charges per level. We'll get rid of that. And the whole casting spells thing, because he's going to do something different with his. Uh, if the soul is freed and the creature is returned to life, uh, if the essence, because this could hit undead. Um, well, it can't if it's a death effect, so whatever, we're fine. The essence is freed and the creature returns to life. Uh, the creature is drained five for every, the creature is drained one. We're just going to say that. Uh, if reduced to zero charges, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, most undead are immune to death effects. Yeah, yeah. Brutal consumption. I like that. Thank you. Brutal consumption. Brutal consumption. All right. Thraxamundar's brutal consumption. He lunges his weapon into a foe to consume their essence, dealing 96 negative damage. If a creature is slain by this attack, his thirst spell becomes trapped within Thraxamundar's weapon. While trapped, a creature cannot be resurrected except by powerful magic, such as Wisp spell, destroying the weapon. Successfully counteracts this, uh, destroying the weapon. Or successfully counteracting this ability releases the soul. If the essence is freed and the creature returns to life, the creature is drained. Three. All right. Um. And now he needs something he could, of course, do with his souls that he absorbs. Uh, perhaps. Creatures should tower up the divine soul. There's some seeds. I like the idea of a spell deflection. Oh, I gotta give him attack of opportunity. Easy attack of opportunity. That is a defense ability. It is a reaction. And that's all you have to write on creatures. I love it. Um, maybe Bloody Rampage should go along with it. Or maybe it should increase a sneak attack die. That'd be pretty cool. Nah, that's too meta. Um, it should definitely do more damage. Because it gets plus one, plus one counters. What if you call it Assassin's Trophy? Oh. There you go, Monty. Yeah, reference another card we pulled. I love that. I love that a lot. Uh, all right. In fact, in that case, I'm going to make another ability called Anguished Unmaking, where he uh, devours the soul from his weapon to uh, heal himself. Because he's he's a marauder. He goes off in the wilderness and just fights. So we need something so he can heal himself, right? Uh, so let's just make this like a one action. It'll be kind of the equivalent of a Lay on Hands, uh, which for a creature at this level, Lay on Hands... Should be mm -mm 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 -mm. Do, do, do. hands angel pathfinder two e because creatures and monsters heal at different rates. Let's go ahead and look at Imperion. No. Oh, why are you so hard to find? 
Creatures. There we go. Angel. There we go. Astral Diva. You have lay on hands, right? You do not. Why did I think that angels had lay on hands? TOC for evil champ. Oh, thank you. Touch of corruption. Grave Knight champion. Can you heal yourself, Grave Knight champion? <laughs> Touch, heal, negative healing, negative healing. Clutch, armor, divine, channel magic, devastating blast, Grave Knight's curse. Um, you know what? We're just going to go off the class then. So champion, focus spell, lay on hands, level 13 would be uh, do, 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 6 plus, uh, would be of course 36, so yeah 36, that sounds fine. So anguished on making, uh, Thraxamundar consumes one soul stored in its weapon um recovering 36 hit points sure that works for me that's so simple and small but it's like really good oh it needs traits uh divine necromancy healing there we go or divine healing necromancy yep I guess it should be gaining temporary hit points. That tends to be what monsters do, right? Uh, negative? Oh, yes, you're right. It should have the negative trait. Uh, consumes one soul stores weapon. Uh, gaining. And gains 36 temporary hit points. There we go. That's how we'll do it. All right, cool. Uh, attack of opportunity. Anguished on making. We need something it could do offensively with its soul, so let's go ahead and do Decimate, as that was the other card we pulled from this. Uh, anguish I'm making, yep. Uh, take healing off or he'll be immune. Oh, thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, wouldn't he also be immune to... No, he wouldn't. Awesome, thanks for finding that, Eldritch. Uh, great. Uh, decimate will be his offensive ability. Uh, it should definitely hit, like, everyone around him for a lot. Uh, what is Decimate doing the thing? It destroys a bunch of different things. So, yeah, that works. So, let's make this a two-action um, offensive ability for sure. Anguish and making is... I guess it's still offense. I think in combat healing is still offense. And I need to make these alphabetical, don't I? All right. So he should definitely unleash the soul energy he has, or uh, part of the undead trait. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so decimate. So let's definitely make this negative. Uh, so de uh, divine. Well, he has assassin's trophy as his offense, but that's against single target. I want a group target for sure. So let's open up yield hazard creator again and double check the level 13 area damage would be level 13 area damage is 76 cool whereas limited use single target is 14d6 i need to up the uh, assassin's trophy should do 12d6 negative damage and uh this one will do 76. big argument on reddit about book of the dead saying you can use soothe on undead pcs despite the spell saying one willing living creature and having the healing trait I mean, it, it has the healing trait, and it, well, most of all, it says uh, one willing living creature. I guess that would be the reason why. But honestly, stuff like that, it comes down to your GM, you know? Like, you talk to the GM, and you say, like, hey, I want to play an undead. Is that cool? And the GM's like, yeah, that sounds great. And you're like, well, can I still be healed with Soothe? <laughs> because I'll need healing, and uh, the champion is going to kill me if he tries. <laughs> so you look, and you go, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> like as a GM, I don't mind if my PCs can be healed by a spell that heals them. <laughs> uh, but eh, depends on how like raw you want to get, I suppose. Uh, so divine uh, necromancy. I'm not going to give the AOO the death trait. Uh, so decimate. Let's make this. Yeah, two actions is fine. Uh, Thraxamundar unleashes the power of the souls. Uh, uh, consumed in his weapon in a devastating wave of negative energy. Necrotic energy. Uh, dealing... 
what I say here? 13 uh, is 7d6. So we're going to say 4d6 per soul unleashed. Per unleashed soul. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. Per unleashed soul. Uh, should this be in a wave or an area? Uh, oh, I gotta say that. Negative damage per unleashed soul. DC 30 basic reflex save. Period. I agree, Sue should be allowed. Yeah. Oh, it's specifically mentioned to work in the healing undead sidebar. Oh, well, I mean, pff, if it says it's in the book, then yeah, you should allow it. I mean, come on. It's in the book. Yeah, that, that works. That works. That makes sense to me. All right, cool. Um, I, I haven't analyzed Book of the Dead completely yet. Um, uh, I, I, I will. I'm there. i am been focusing very much on the archetypes uh, and the monsters um, and how to summon the monsters. Guess what I'm trying to write? Anyway, uh, Therox and Mundar on this is a devastating wave. Um, so Decimate needs to do more than just that. I mean, that's good. Oh, it needs an area. That's right. Uh, devastating wave of necrotic energy. I am missing on how to write area effects real quick. Uh, I know Devourer has one. No. Sacrosyn should have one, though. No, it doesn't. Um, you know, I know how to find this. Fireball. Uh, cone. That's how I'll find it. It's the word cone. Bone chip has a cone. No, it doesn't. Why did it look up the word bone when I said cone? Thanks, quick Nethys. Let's say burst. Shocker Lizard, you have a burst. <laughs> Shocker, I love summoning, but when they announce incarnate spells. Oh yeah, incarnate spells are amazing. I love incarnate spells. I want more incarnate spells. Anyone out there who writes incarnate spells, do it, and I'll review it as much as I review everything. Shocking burst, uh, electricity damage. 10-foot emanation. Okay, so you do that before the words, that deals. Cool. So you would say, devastating wave and necrotic energy. So you'd probably say, consumed in his weapon in a 30-foot... Let's say in an... In a 10-foot... Let's say a 15-foot cone... Which, we'll get to that being bigger soon. In a 15-foot cone. Oh, uh, in his weapon. Creatures in a 15-foot cone take 4d6 negative energy damage per unleashed soul. Uh, increase the size of the cone by 10 feet by 5 feet. Hmm, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Let's make it a 15 foot cone, yeah, by five feet for every, for every unleashed soul. Uh, in that case, I'm going to make it a, uh, yeah, 15, so I'll make it a 20 foot default. Let's make it a 10 foot cone and then five for every unleashed soul. Great. Uh, yeah, that works great. Let's say that Unsword Killer of Everyone um, usually starts with three charges. There. Uh, he's intended to be used in encounters where there's going to be a bunch of enemies around and he'll go around slaughtering NPCs to basically charge up his sword. So uh, PCs need to isolate him or or tell the other NPCs to get out or something. Uh, he is definitely intended for a special encounter, a special chaotic melee where uh, three sides are fighting against each other, which there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that and if you were 13th level characters you should have those kinds of cool abilities you can do with that could it cause bleeding oh yeah definitely uh so creatures in a 10 foot cone take let's try that unleashes the power of souls consumed in his weapon um let's say uh blasting splinters of necrotic steel across the battlefield Cool. So it like multiplies his weapon and flings out bone shards. Oh, splinters, uh, blasting bone shards across the battlefield. Creatures in a 10-foot code take, uh, do, 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 4d6 slashing damage per unleashed soul. 
let's say 3d6, uh, 4d6 per unleashed soul is fine. Um, increase the wizard for unleashed soul. Uh, 46 reflex save. Um, creatures who take damage from uh, creatures who fail their reflex saves take uh, 2d6 bleed. Great. Does it take 2d6 bleed? That's not how you word that. Bleed. You say uh, deals, or do you deal the bleed damage? Oh, persistent bleed, that's how you do it. You call it persistent bleed, I knew that. Uh, or it takes persistent bleed, plus persistent bleed, there we go. Slashing damage, plus 1d6, persistent bleed per unleashed soul. That's much better. Creatures who, who succeed, uh, they will already do that. Yeah, that's fine. That works for me. I'm going to use him to stalk my PCs. Excellent! You should use him to stalk your PCs. Uh, decimate. Toxic Mooners is, is a blasting bone chairs across the battlefield that splatter the ground red. That paint the ground red. Let's put that. That paint the ground red with the blood of his... of everyone. <laughs> of his enemies, of everyone, <laughs> because he he doesn't. Well, I'd say of his enemies, sure, his enemies. Um, I do one quick thing here. Uh, let's call this um, killer of everyone. Uh, I'm gonna make this a one more no action ability, and it is simply Thraxamundar can flank is considered is considered uh, to. Thraxamundar has no allies. Thraxamundar can flank with any creature who... Thraxamundar is considered to be flank... Um, is considered to be flanking with any creature who is the enemy of the creature he is flanking. Thraxamundar uh, flanks with any creature uh, as long as they are the enemy of his target. There. There we go. That way he could still flank to get a sneak attack, uh, even though he should have no allies. It also specifically says he has no allies, which uh, he can't be buffed by allies or whatever. That's fine. He is out there killing on his own. He wants to kill everyone. Uh, so that's good. This works for me. Uh... Let's put Dreadbore Decimate up there. We need to we need to um, alphabetize this real quick. And uh, yeah, that was fun. So I'm going to uh, compile a PDF with all my booster bestiaries. It should be up sometime before the end of the week. I will be meeting uh, with James Beck with to interview him and his new book on Friday uh, before uh, Friday at four o'clock um, here on this channel. Um, thank you very much for showing up. I had a great time. I hope you did too. Please go ahead and check out my Discord at infinite.net. Uh, make sure to take the action off Dread Boar and Sneak Attack. Oh, thank you. Yes, I will make sure to take the action off Dread Boar and Sneak Attack, and I will post the finalized version of Thrax and Moondar with all those little edits on all my social media channels and Twitter. Uh, thank you very much for showing, and uh, remember... Uh, you are infinite with possibilities with infinite reviews and you never know what you're going to crack next time.